Hello there, Nigel. Great to have you with us. You have our full attention. Right. Well, it, it, it's lovely to be with you. And um, I wanted to talk about exponential change. And I want to remind everybody that the only way that industrial transformation has ever happened is exponentially. So we, we know the way this movie plays out. It's been seen many times before. Horses to cars, um, valves to transistors, analog to digital film, um, the rise of the internet, um, the rise of mobile phones. I remember um, I celebrate my 21st wedding anniversary tomorrow. I can remember driving to my um, wedding with my wife 21 years ago, and she told me she'd divorce me if I ever got a mobile phone. Uh, well, we're still to, we're still together, and, we're, and everyone's got a mobile phone now. Um, so, and the key thing about um, exponential change is that it seems like it's never going to happen and then suddenly it takes off and suddenly it's all, all over. So, I mean, I just want to really commend Johan and the Exponential Roadmap team on the way they've been communicating this. The way I like to say it is if, and I'm particularly obsessed by the, the EV transition because um, I worked in the automotive sector in the first half of my career. Um, if anyone ever tells you, yeah, but it's only 4% of market share that EVs have got at the moment. Just ask them, how quickly did that double from two to four? Because that's what matters in exponential growth. It's the doubling rate. And if it's two years, then you go from two to four in two years. 4% still doesn't seem like much. Then you go eight, 16, 32, 64, and it's all over within 10 years. Um, and, and I think that the EV transition is a really good example of how bad we are at imagining exponential change and how inevitable it is. In 2016, after the Paris Agreement, the IEA was saying we'll still be building combustion engine cars until 2070. 2070. A couple of years later, UK and France said, no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll ban them in 2040. Then we had Mercedes, the inventor of the combustion engine, saying we'll stop building them in 2039. Then we have um, a bunch of cities saying they'll have emissions-free zones in the 2030s. Yesterday, California, fifth biggest economy in the world, one of the biggest uh, markets for cars, said 2035. Um, and we know that the UK is going to announce the results of its consultation, which will be more ambitious than that um, in the next few weeks. So from 2070, our expectation from the experts at the IEA in 2016 to maybe 2030 in 2020, the future's come forward by 40 years in four years. Um, so that's also why I'm so excited that um, the, this, this amazing collaboration of Exponential Roadmap, International Chamber of Commerce uh, and We Mean Business have, have launched the, the SME Climate Hub. Um, I think I just caught um, uh, Johan talking about millions of millions of companies. We know there are there are millions and millions, I think there's 45 million SMEs in the ICC membership. So this is really important because so many of them are in, in, uh, are in, are in the supply chains of major multinationals who are committing to zero. We've seen the number of companies um, committing to net zero grow very significantly since we launched the, the race to zero in, in June. And of course, it's a full value chain commitment. It's not just your own operations, it's everything upstream and downstream. So those companies need all the SMEs in their value chains to commit to zero. So thank you for all the leadership from ICC Women Business and Exponential Roadmap on that. Last thing I'd say is that business needs clear policy signals. We talked about the ambition loop. It doesn't matter how ambitious business is, the leaders can't get too far ahead of the market because at some point there's a penalty for being too far ahead um, if the regulations aren't creating a level playing field. So um, also really exciting to see that the EU go heading in the right direction, um, expecting a strong announcement from the UK on the fifth anniversary of Paris on the 12th of December. And of course, the great news yesterday from China that they're committing uh, to net zero in the 2050s. So lots of good signs that the ambition loop is up and running and we're headed for exponential change to solve the climate crisis in the 2040s. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Uh, I'd like to ask you, what key message do you have to the politicians of the COP? to make it possible to have the emissions by 2030? Well, I think the, 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 there's two messages, really. One is um, raise your own ambition. Take confidence in the exponential growth in businesses committing to net zero, 2050, 2040, even, even, even earlier, and the number of cities, you know, more than half the world's population. So set your own um, net zero um, long-term commitment and then and then entrench that in law and policies that get us to halve emissions by 2030. So take take faith and take 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 positive encouragement from the great work that, that many organizations and many businesses and cities are doing around the world. We can only do it if we do it together and everyone's relying on um, on, on governments to step up and set the, the guidelines. The other thing is go to Glasgow to finish off the negotiations of the Paris rule book. We need, we need good faith, um, compromise, 
Um, it's a complex technical negotiation. Um, it's the last 10% of the Paris rule book, but it really matters so that we can get on with the business of the decade of delivery. Do you have any, any even more specific messages when it comes to making this possible of halving for businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think we need policy signals that drive action in the next five years. So not just a long term target, but exactly. Um, so um, every sector needs the policy signal which says here's the long term direction and here's where we're going. And then the appropriate policy measures, they could be a mixture of carbon pricing standards. Um, in some cases where it's very early, like the hydrogen economy might need some um, government support to early stage projects. So the, the, the government Policies need to be tailored to where we're at on that S curve. If we if we've already found the solution, like electric vehicles, just set the end goal and mandate it, and the market will take care of that. If we're at the beginning, like with hydrogen, you need to encourage the cost down until we get the the market onto the S curve. What is your reflection on Christiana Figueres uh, Figueres message before uh, for the uh, politicians at, at the COP to look at the businesses and just follow their lead? Uh, I'm a huge fan of Christiana. I would say um, the, the the policymakers who are laggards should follow the business lead, and the businesses who are laggards should follow the policy lead. Because there are leaders in not every domain. There are there are there are, um, there are countries committing to net zero 2050 or even sooner, as there are businesses. But it's not universal. So I think look to your peers and 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 your contemporaries. In the, in the business space or the policy space, depending on where you're from. Um, and, and they've set the bar, it's time to follow it because that's the direction we're going. This is an inevitable transition, right? It's not a choice. We're going to get to zero. We're going to have to. It's, a, it's an existential. Um, the science is, is just getting worse. The IPCC will publish some more reports next year. The risks are growing every time the scientists assess the risk of 1.5 degrees. So it's inevitable. Get ahead of the curve or you're going to lose.